punting Melbourne style or Potsy and Ralph Mouth, however you want it. This is part two. Uh, Pots, so we, we are our differing main differences in our services, whether we get them right or wrong, or whether we, uh, however we, we look at racing. So most people buy mine on a Saturday, and that's if they want it, and it's there, that's my staking plan for that day, that's it. So take it or leave it. Your staking plan with your Darren Potter's race assessments is you want people over a journey? Yes. And you've had a few queries about that staking plan of yours? Yes, I've had, I had a few people um, write me with, with a very similar query. Yeah. So it's about um, what sort of dollars per unit do you have to be betting to make buying all the products worthwhile and that that, that type of thing. So first of all, I want to say that the um, the POTS Play stuff has been designed specifically to be at a low cost, twenty dollars a week, to get people you know quite a bit of action betting you know somewhere around the eighty units a week. Yeah. Um, at you know probably five different race meetings, you know, picking the eyes out of it. Yeah. Um, but the, the full sets are really for some people that want to immerse themselves in a race card. Yes. You know, and bet as many races as possible on that card, have a full set of prices, so maps, some comments about the market, so they can, you know, not only just look at the, the staking plan and follow it specifically if they want, but they can also modify it to suit their own yeah. work. So they're sort of, in a way, two different um, products and two different price points. So um, now, all I can talk about with staking is what I do. And then yep. people can, you know, take that on board and then adjust it to suit, suit themselves and decide, you know, what their goals are and what they, um, what, what's best for them to use. So, basically, I can calculate my bets. So, to, oh, let me put it this way: to calculate my bets, I use a thousand unit bank. Yep. Okay. Now, does that mean I keep a thousand units in betting accounts? No, I don't. I just use that as a as a calculation point. Okay, I keep it about between 200 and 250 units, so about a quarter of my bank liquid in, in the betting accounts. Now, in a nine-year period, the biggest drawdown I've ever had over any period is 235 units, which was in April and May last year. So, even topping those accounts back up, the biggest drawdown you've had from, you know, your reserve, if you like, yeah. as far as as deep as I've got into the bank, is almost half. Yeah. Okay, now people that, and I would encourage people that are you know just getting started, they've only got so much in their betting accounts, to think about their bank as what they're prepared, calculate as a 12 month situation, look at what you've got liquid, yep. and what you'd be prepared to put into it over the full course of the year, yep. and then you know work on that basis, that you have a certain amount liquid in your account that will fluctuate, and I'd suggest you, I adjust my dollars per unit monthly, but you can do it weekly if you want, on the fluctuations in your bank. Um, and so you, you're using that thousand units, not, honestly you could use a thousand, you could use 500, it'll just be a bit more volatile than 500, right? So it depends on what your goals are, what you're trying to achieve. In my case, I'm making sure I can never break the bank. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'd have to have a, a, a god awful run to do that. So. Um, Again, people that are getting started and their only goal is about the profit they make, yep. and they're looking at my stuff, the POTS play stuff will get you started. If you're also looking on top of that for some educational opportunities and to try and see how I um, do the form and assess markets and price and do the maps and all that sort of stuff, and you would like some back issues of my product, just get in contact with me and I'll be happy to send you some, okay, so uh, of the full sets. Um, now, with the POTS Play service, I've, it's, the one, people that were getting it previously at One to Follow was a tech service. Yep. I've changed it to an email service so I can provide more information and context around those selections on a day-to-day -day basis, particularly the meetings where I'm not doing a full set. So yep. for the guys that got the ones at Sally, so there were two betting races, but I made comments on five races to give them an idea of the process I'd gone through to, to come to those selections. So anyway, I mean, that's, that's probably at, at enough at this stage. You know, I don't know how that relates to if it has any relevance to your stuff, Ralphie. But you know, um, no, where, where it's relevant is that all we, or you, me, anyone in this field, um, is that we. I think our mindset is to we want to educate our customers and say that we've done a lot more work than you're capable of. If you're capable of doing as much work as we are, you're probably going to be doing it yourself. Yeah. But most people have a real job. 
<laughs> exactly. And they haven't got the time to put in what we do. Absolutely. And after a while, they'll either say, this bloke knows what he's talking about, or this bloke doesn't know what he's talking about. And that's called a free market. It, absolutely. It's an extremely time-consuming process. Now, I, the first step for me is I do it to win for myself. Like, yeah. So I have to do it. For me to be able to help my customers yeah. win yeah. and enjoy racing, Yes. that's a prerequisite. I have to so, put in the hard work. So that's it. So that's the first step in the process. I go through all the races, price them and work at how I'm going to, which horses I'm going to back and when I'm going to back them. Yeah. And I'm trying to provide that same information to the punters because I want to, um, there's different kind of subscribers. If I, you know, pick one out that's been a great long term subscriber like Rexy. Rexy has a, you know, a corporate job that yep. keeps him very busy. He doesn't have time to do the forms, but he's a great punter. And so he, yep. he's in a way outsourcing the form assessment to me. Yeah. And there's lots of customers like that. Then there's other ones that are, are tr trying to use my stuff to help them build up their own skill set to be able to do it for themselves. That's great too. Like that's I did that with Mark Lambourne stuff when I first started. Right. I used Mark's set to so I'd do my own work first, then overlay with his, and I slowly, slowly, slowly improved my skill set. Yeah. So there's room. Both of those work. Absolutely no problem at all. So I just want to, um, before I forget, say a couple of guys that signed up for the new improved plots play service that come back some great feedback um uh anthony i won't use it any surnames and ray i uh, really appreciate that feedback guys there's, there's a number of other people that have emailed in and i appreciate all that getting in contact and that's the reality we we both we're separate but we both do our best and uh, and when we get good feedback we appreciate it but we are accountable and i one of the things i want to say and i had to do transition myself because I was in the racing media and you know you get, give us a tip and you give up your tip and next week you, and you're happy if you get it right but ultimately you're not you haven't got a thing you're writing on it yeah this isn't a sledge I'll have when I have a sledge I'll do a prop one <laughs> um, but really one thing I've learned was that in general and I know you found a beauty last week a couple of weeks ago and I've found some of the big odds but in general the most amount of value was in the short end of the market I think that's fair. Yeah, no, it helps you turn money over and be in the game regularly. Yeah. regularly. And I think that the ones that it helps you find out of the market, which are the icing on the cake, Yes. you find them because you're regularly in the market. Yes. 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 Well, to, to me, but if, if someone said to you, you probably pick my answer, but if someone said to you, what's the, the best value bet in the last 12 months of, in the city of Lemon? Yeah. Oh, you're, you're going to say Wings. I'm going to say Wings. Every day of the week, it was the best value I've ever seen in my life from the Cox Plate. Yeah. But wouldn't that... But I'm not talking about odds, I'm talking about probabilities. Yeah. And I think there's a, there's a very yes. real difference. You know what I mean? So, and then when you're in the racing media, as I was, um, and you're, you're tipping 10 to 1 shots all the time, so you can say, look how big my odds were. Well, that's fine, but if you're not accountable about it, <laughs> you know, the reality is if they're 10 to 1, 1 in 11 or 12 will win. So, yeah, look, I mean, the stuff you get for free in the media is missing a key component of actually being a successful punter. Yeah. Uh, you've got to, I mean, at the end of the day, all of the betting plans that I sent out, the staking for the pots place service, it's worked out on probabilities. Here's the prob if we back these horses, here's the probability of us winning, That's it. Of yeah. winning the race versus this is the probability that the markets assess them. Yeah. So in every race that I bet in, I've assessed those horses we're backing as having a higher probability of winning than the price we're taking. Yeah. Otherwise, it's a no bet race. It's as simple as that. But I do think that that's something that's sometimes underestimated when people say, "Oh, it's all about the price." I think it's all about the probability. <laughs> it's the, yeah. The, the two things are inherently attached. If you don't find, I mean, basically, if I, I always like going back to the coin toss example because people can accept yeah. it, right? Yeah. The, it's a fifty percent chance the right price is even money. So if you get two dollars twenty yeah. repeatedly over a series of coin tosses yes. and you stake correctly to your bank you'll be you'll win right yes the problem is and this is the part that punters really have to understand if you over bet your bank yeah you will go broke even though you're taking 220 about an even money chance yes and if you have too much on one coin toss yeah that's what i'm saying you, you've it's, over bet it's 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 russian roulette you've over bet if you over bet your bank it's a mathematical certainty that you will bust your bank yes and even someone like wings who I call it dollar thirty. I could call it yeah. dollar twenty, and it started at dollar ninety. Um, you know, someone can say, "Have all your money on it," because look at what an overlay is. Well, if it sticks its foot in the hole, absolutely, that is not being responsible. The, the only way you can have all your bank on it is yeah. if you market one dollar. That's right. right? If, if it's 
yeah. to have your entire bank on any bet, you have to market a hundred percent chance of winning. Like, while we're talking about animals written by people, <laughs> there are no hundred percent. We'll have a look at Corville next.